So what's your go-to cylinder head for a big block Chevy? Rec ports or oval ports? If you haven't taken a look at part one, check it out, it's right here. We compared a ton of different oval port heads on a 468 inch big block Chevy. Now it's time in part two to check out all the rec port heads on a 496. In this video, we compared no less than eight sets of rec port heads on a 496 stroke. We had iron heads, aluminum heads. We even had one set of oval port heads, you know, just to stir the pot. To get things started for our rec port big block Chevy head test, we assembled a suitable test motor and this was a 496 stroker. We wanted to make sure that we had enough motor to take advantage of what you know some of these ported heads had to offer. Especially on the rec port side, they tend to be a little bit bigger, so we want to go with a little bit more displacement. So if we take a look at the test description here, I'm going to put that up on the board so you guys can see that. So we've got a big block 431 by 425. We've got dome pistons, you know, 18 to 20 cc dome pistons, so we've got a decent amount of compression. It's got a fairly good size uh, comp roller cam in it. Well, I say good size. It's not a 275, 282 kind of cam. It's more like a 255, 262, so it's a medium size cam. This is actually the camshaft that we use for a lot of blower and turbo applications. It's that comp BR300. 650 lift, it's a solid roller. 255, 262 duration and 114 degree lobe separation angle. As it shows here, we use the um, 300 tall roller lifters. We had good 1.7 roller rockers on it. And for the intake, we use the Victor 454R, which means in the R stands for the rec port because they also have an oval port version of that intake. And we teamed that with a Holly 950 HP carburetor, an MSD distributor, which we ran locked for this test because we only ran from 3,500 past 6,500 for this test. So a lock distributor was fine there. We had a good Mylodon uh, oiling system on it, including a windage tray. And we made sure to adjust the oil level on the dyno to make sure that we didn't have a windage problem. We started out with a set of stock 088 casting iron big block Chevy rec port heads, kind of the quintessential big block Chevy rec port heads. And naturally we dialed in the air fuel with jetting as necessary to optimize the power output. So equipped with our baseline set of cylinder heads, the 088 iron rec port heads, our 496 produced 631 horsepower and 578 foot pounds of torque. So it was doing pretty well. You know, it's kind of a healthy 496 with that factory rec port head. But the first set of heads came from the guys over at ProComp, and they were a CNC ported set of heads. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll put up all the specs for the heads at the end of the test so you guys can take a look. You guys can kind of compare them, valve sizes and port volume, chamber volume, all of that stuff. So here's what the ProComp CNC ported heads did. They picked the power up to 690 horsepower. And you can see peak torque didn't jump up a lot, but it kind of carried a little bit farther. It made right at 600 foot-pounds, 599.7 foot-pounds. Actually, 600, I take that back, 600.1, so right at exactly 600 foot-pounds of torque. And you can see down here low, down below 4,500 RPM. The gains were kind of minor past that point, and this thing could really take advantage of the extra airflow, and, and my guess is larger port volume as well. So here's what happened when we installed our first set of heads. Let's take a look at our next pair. After running the first set of heads from ProComp, we selected another set of iron heads, and unfortunately, I would have liked to have run a set of ported versions of this 088 head from the factory rec port head, but I didn't get a chance to do that. I didn't find anybody that had a good set that they could supply for us for the test. But we did something else. Um, I actually ran a set of iron rectangular port heads from Summit Racing. So they're obviously a good upgrade to the factory head. And here's what happened when we installed the Summit rec port heads. They're you know fairly inexpensive. They're iron, which in my opinion, I don't think anybody should ever like buy or use a set of iron heads because they're, <laughs> they're just way too heavy to deal with. But there are a lot of them out there. Guys are using them for boats and stuff. And equipped with these fairly inexpensive iron heads from Summit Racing, our 496 produced 688 horsepower. And torque was up as well. 607 foot-pounds of torque. So a little bit more torque than that um, Pro Comp head made. And they had good power out at the top. 
and they started making more power at about 4200 rpm down below that they were kind of the same as the factory head where additional flow and performance probably just not that much of a big deal the factory head was doing just fine there on the 496 and i think probably we would see this difference the the gains offered by this head and all the rest of the heads in this group as well they would just increase as we put more camshaft in this thing i mean with the 496 you could certainly make you know 750 or 800 horsepower and this combination was going to do it because the camshaft that we used was fairly mild but as we went up in camshaft and eventual power output and obviously if you went up in displacement as well if you were testing this on a 540 or a 565 or something the gains offered by the ported heads would just go would be even more but even on this 496 we got some good gains 688 horsepower from the iron summit head let's take a look at our next set of cylinder heads after running the summit heads on our 496 inch big block Chevy, it was time for a set of aluminum heads, so we decided to step up to a set of set from TrickFlow. And TrickFlow offers a number of heads, so we decided to test a set of their 360cc intake port fast as cast big block heads. Here's how the big block TrickFlow heads did. Equipped with the TrickFlow heads, our 496 produced 691 horsepower and the torque output was over 600 foot-pounds peaking at 603 and as we see from the curve the trick flow heads offered power gains starting at about 43 or 4400 rpm and the power gains increased with engine speed with the three 360 cc intake ports it's possible that those heads might have wanted something bigger than our 496 but even on this the trick flow heads were obviously a good power uh, gain over the factory rec port heads now let's take a look at our next set of cylinder heads. For our next test, we actually stepped down in port volume, but stepped up in power. The heads from Brodex, the intake ports were 332 cc's, but as we'll see from the power curves, the Brodex heads offered like a ton of power. It's pretty impressive. Not only did they offer, you know, plenty of peak power, or the Brodex heads, the R496 produced 704 horsepower. Peak torque was up quite a bit, 624 foot-pounds of torque, nice. But take a look down low, even down below 4,500 RPM, which is where the other heads that we tested so far kind of suffered, the Brodex heads offered more power through the entire curve. So take a look at the specs at the end of the test and take a look and kind of compare these. You can see things like chamber volume and uh, valve size, port volume and stuff. You got to compare for yourself and see how these might have done this. Obviously, we're also going to look at the airflow curves and that stuff, all that stuff is provided as well. So measure the airflow, the port volume, and you kind of get on a fair, pretty good idea of how maybe each one of these heads would perform. But obviously, these Brodex heads work very well on our 496. And as we said before, it looks like that even if we had more camshaft or more displacement, that the Brodex heads would shine probably even more. Let's take a look at our next set of cylinder heads. Our next set of heads shared something in common with the Brodex and obviously eventually the dark heads that we would also test, but they were right in that sweet spot of intake port volume. They were 335 cc's, and the Edelbrock was a CNC ported version, which seemed to work out very well. Equipped with the Edelbrock CNC 335 heads, power output jumped to 723 horsepower. And peak torque checked in at 627 foot-pounds. And like the Brodex heads, all to, to a slightly lesser extent, the Edelbrock heads offered power even down low, power gains down low compared to the factory rec, rec port head, but big power gains up the top. And I think that we were just scratching the surface of what these heads were, of the potential of these heads. If you take a look at the airflow numbers, they'd support a lot more power than our 496 was making you know obviously something with more camshaft or more displacement or a combination of the two i think that these guys you know with these heads you probably could be up in the up in the 800 horsepower range without too much of a problem but even on our little 496 with that mild cam in it these heads offered some good power so now let's take a look at our next set of cylinder heads. the final set of heads in our trio of 335 cc kind of intake port volumes came from Dart in their Pro 1, and we, we like these heads. We've had real good luck with them, these Dart 335s, the, their Pro 1 series always works really well. We've had them on a lot of good motors, including a 540 crate motor, and that thing's worked really well. We made over 800 horsepower with that thing at a tunnel ram, and even with low compression, it was a good piece. So we were anxious, obviously, to try them on our 496. Here's how they did. Here's the Dart Pro 1 335s. Equipped with the dart heads, our 496 
produce 717 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 619 foot-pounds, which was nice. And again, like the Brodex heads and the Edelbrock heads before them, the Dart heads picked up power even down low, although not quite as much as the Brodex heads did, if you take a look at that. But still, better is better. <laughs> and obviously, these Dart heads, like the others, would be better off kind of on a bigger combination or something with more camshaft. But even on this combination, compared to the factory Rectport heads, the Dart Aluminum Pro 1s offered, you know, really good power gains. So now let's take a look at our final set of heads, and this is where we throw you the curveball. All the rest of these have obviously been rec port heads, but our last set of heads actually were oval. I threw in this final set of heads for two reasons. First of all, I wanted to get with the guys from Airflow Research because I know that they know how to make power, and in all of our testing, they've really done fairly well. You know, so a lot of the other guys, but those guys know how to make power over there, so I wanted to include them. The second thing is I wanted to also include a set of oval port heads in this test. Now everybody jumps up and down about the rec port heads and they're bigger and they make more power and all that because we know from the past that GM put oval port heads on the low power stuff and the rec port heads on the big stuff. So we've all been taught over the years that you got to have rec port heads to make lots of power. And <laughs> that stands to reason because we ran all the rec port heads on the bigger batter 496 compared to the 468 for the oval port heads. But this final test shows that Really, this, the uh, test motor doesn't care what shape the port is, and you can make lots of power from an oval port head. So let's take a look on these Airflow Research heads. We also had basically the smallest port volume. I mean, these things were only 290 cc's, so it shows that you can make a lot of power not only from oval ports, but from obviously smaller port volumes. So we kind of saw the same thing on the original oval port head test because the 265 oval port AFR heads made really good power even though the port volume was small. So we don't need big ports and we don't need them to be rec ports to make power. So equipped with the oval port, the 290 oval port AFR heads on our 496, it produced 729 horsepower and 639 foot-pounds of torque. And again, as you can see down here, maybe thanks to the small port volume, maybe because the AFR guys like the Brodex guys and the Dart guys and the Edelbrock guys know how to make power, but this combination offered, you know, power gains even down below 4,500, which more peak power, always good, more power everywhere, even better. So now let's take a look at all of the uh, specs on all the heads, along with all the airflow data on all the heads, so you guys can sit back and compare that and argue back and forth. Let's check that out. Here are the specs on all the rec port heads. Here is all the intake flow data on the rec port heads. And here is all the exhaust flow data on the rec port heads. Okay guys, what did we learn from this giant head test on our 496 big block shed? Well, first of all, we learned that the motor doesn't care what the shape of the port is. Oval port heads flow well, Rec port heads flow well. Heck, all you need are good flowing heads. And that's the other thing we learned from this test. There's lots of good heads to choose from. Lots of good rec port heads for our 496. Lots of good oval port heads for our smaller 468. Basically, there's lots of good heads. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Lots of good heads. I'll keep testing.